What's up YouTube, CJ Extreme here to make my predictions for Hell in a Cell 2020. So before we uh, get into that, I enjoyed Plasma Champions, but I only like, well the two matches that I liked the most were the first match with the Intercontinental Championship hanging above the ring. Sami Zayn, AJ Styles, and Jeff Hardy had a pretty creative matchup with Sami Zayn retaining the championship. I wanted Sami to retain, I thought he would retain, or, or I wanted him to get the championship, and he did. But it was it was just cool. I liked the match, I liked the creativity, and it was fun to watch. Probably my favorite ladder match uh, that I've seen in WWE, uh, one of them at least. Um, Jey Uso vs. Roman Reigns was also really cool. I enjoyed the storytelling. There wasn't a whole lot of wrestling, but I think that kind of helped the match out as well. Because I think everyone kind of knew Rowan was going to beat Jay anyway, right? I don't, I don't think anyone thought Jay was actually going to win the championship there. We'll get, we'll talk more about them later on. Anyways, Otis versus The Miz for the Money in the Bank contract. I don't really see Otis uh, losing here. And the story basically is that Miz feels like Otis is uh, tarnishing the prestige of the championship. Or the, uh, the Money in the Bank briefcase. And he wants it basically. Like, he's saying that that's what he's doing, but in reality, he just wants it, and he feels like Otis is pretty dumb. He's trying to prey on Otis, and he's trying to get the contract. He could very well win right here, but I don't think anyone would like it if that happened. But they broke up the iconic, so I, I would not be surprised by anything at this point. I mean, they brought in Retribution as a group, and they're kind of burying them right now. You know, I, I don't know, man. I don't know. Maybe it just, maybe it just won't, uh... It just won't make anyone happy at all. Maybe they'll just go with uh, Miz beating him. But I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with um, Otis winning here. I think this would be like just to kind of get some refocus back on him, give him a little storyline to do uh, while he's Mr. Money in the Bank. Maybe he'll go after Sami Zayn uh, for the Intercontinental Championship at some point. Maybe that'll be interesting. Uh, I like him cashing in. That seems like a WrestleMania thing. I don't think he's gonna cash in anytime before then. Or maybe he'll cash in a Survivor Series. Maybe he'll be in a Survivor Series match. Uh, the champion will be in the match too, and then he'll try to pin the champion uh, after the match is over. That could happen. That could happen. But I don't know. I it's very very possible for Otis to just lose here. He could just lose it, and they just give it to the Miz. I, and it could give Miz a lot of heat, but. It might not give him like really heat. It'll be more so like we're upset with uh, management because of how they're treating, you know, talent. Like, why would you give Otis a briefcase in the first place if you're just gonna take it from him? Kind of like with Mr. Kennedy, but Mr. Kennedy, there was a different reason they did that. I think they, I believe he was injured. But anyways, uh, moving on. I think yeah, I think Otis is gonna keep it. Jeff Hardy versus Elias. This match should be. Uh, Symphony of Destruction match, which is where they have all the instruments around and they destroy each other with it. And that's what this match should be, in my opinion. But it's not that. And it's probably going to just be a one-on-one matchup because they're trying to like space out the three Hell in the Cell matches that they have. So these are like kind of like cool-down matches in a sense. So I'm not saying that it inherently has to be bad. It could, all this could be great, but uh, I just have no interest in this match at all. And Elias is probably going to lose because. Elias always loses. He could win here if they wanted him to, but okay, let's say he does win. Who does he go after? He's not gonna, I highly doubt they're gonna do a Drew versus Elias thing. They're not gonna do that. And Bobby Lashley's the Intercontinental Champion, so they're not gonna do that. And then maybe he'll go after the 24 7 Championship again. I don't know. It's just, Jeff has more to gain by winning than Elias has to lose from losing. Elias usually loses, so I, that's my logic here. He normally loses, therefore he's going to lose here again. He's just back to do the Alliance. It's like he's in a program and he loses. I don't know. Anyways, so Jeff and Otis. Now we we'll move on to our first Hell in a Cell matchup, which we're going to do uh, Randy Orton versus Drew McIntyre for the WWE Championship. And Randy Orton, I thought, was going to win at Clash of Champions. I thought that was going to be it right there. I thought he was going to win and then he was going to lose it back to Drew in uh, you know their rubber match and Hell in a Cell. That's what I thought they were gonna do, but no, no. Instead, Drew beats him twice, and then Randy still gets a shot because he's Randy Orton. And don't get me wrong, the match is gonna be good. It's gonna be good, of course. But it's just like, why? Why not just? Why not just end it? I don't understand that. 
happen. Like, there's no reason for this to be like an ongoing feud. Like, when they when the first match happened, I was like, okay, Randy Orton's gonna win, and then he didn't win. I was like, okay, well next time he's surely gonna win, and he lost again. So this time he's just gonna lose again. This he's not gonna win. There's no point in continuing this. I don't know, man. This is just maybe Edge will interfere. Like he was the only one who didn't show up at that ambulance match, so maybe he'll show up at the Hell in the Cell matchup. But then it's like, who does Drew face then? If he beats uh, beats him here, then uh, where does Drew go from here? That's why it's like important to like build the rest of your roster around your champion, or you know, like if you want to build contenders. Because right now, I I genuinely, off the top of my head, can't really think of anybody who's gonna face Drew next for the championship. Like. No one who hasn't already had a shot, at least. Um, anyways, I guess Drew just, is just gonna win here again, and it's gonna be good. But I just don't, I I don't care too much about this match either. But it should be fun, you know. And who knows when I talk about the results of the match, maybe I'll really be into it. So now, Bailey versus Sasha, the feud. Speaking of ongoing feud, so I mean they were friends. And then they were enemies and they were friends and they were friends for a while and they had a really good run together during this whole pandemic and they've they've really just been going in as a group and then uh it made sense for bailey to turn on sasha bailey was like uh you're gonna turn on me so i'm gonna turn on you first that makes perfect sense to me i don't see why she wouldn't think that because let's let's all be real here um well okay for me specifically it just I thought Sasha was gonna turn. At some point, it was gonna be Sasha not having any belts, and she was gonna turn on Bailey. It maybe be an anti-hero because everyone wants to see Bailey lose, but the way Sasha went about it is just kind of messed up because that's her friend, right? But now it's like Sasha says that Bailey will be nothing without her, but then she wants to fight her and try to help herself. She's like a face, but she's not. She's like a tweener kind of. And then you have Bailey, who definitely is a heel, but she feels like she's in the right for doing what she did. And I think. I think Sasha's going to win. Here's what I, here's the thing, here's my thing. I think Bailey's already had a really long reign, right? So to freshen things up, they have Sasha beat Bailey. And when Sasha beats Bailey, she destroys Bailey. Like they have a really good fight, beating each other up, and then Sasha finally wins a Hell in the Cell where she destroys Bailey inside the uh, inside the cell at the end. Maybe she takes a chair to her neck stomps on her and everyone's like oh man that was gruesome so can't go for the pin and she's like nope i'm not going for a pin and then she like does something else to her and she just takes it too far basically trying to get her revenge on bailey and bailey's gone for a while and then they can come back and finish it once and for all at wherever wherever they decide to finish it right probably gonna end up being at wrestlemania that's probably where this is gonna end i'm thinking sasha wins it here she holds it until you know, Royal Rumble rolls around. Here comes, uh, here comes Bailey. She wins, and then she faces Sasha at, or Sasha at WrestleMania, and then maybe Sasha beats uh, Bailey again during the time of her reign. Uh, Sasha defends against. I guess she defends against Charlotte, maybe just to be like, "Oh, you always lose your first defense," and then she wins anyway. So it gives her, you know, credibility, and she can have like a good long reign for once. Um, and finally. Our last matchup is uh, Roman Reigns and Jey Uso. So it's a Hell in a Cell match, but it's an I Quit match inside a Hell in a Cell. And if Jey loses, Jey has to, um, he either has to join up with Roman or he's going to be disowned by his family. It's fucked up. But that's how it's going to be. Him and his brother and their families, respectively, will be disowned by uh, Roman, the tribal chief, and everyone else involved in the Anawai family. So, Jay's not gonna win. He's not gonna win. And what would be a crazy swerve is if they started the show and then Jay just like says it at the very beginning and then they join up and then they're a group. That would just be like, wow. So now they have, instead of having actually three Hell in a Cell matches, they actually have two. And then they have like this, oh, they're all heels and they're together or whatever. And they're the bloodline and people want to take them down for disgrace in the championship with that. You know, they could do that. But I don't think they will. I think Jay's just going to have a war with Roman and Jay is going to um, lose. That's what I think is going to happen. And he'll have to join up with Roman. And 
I think Big E is probably gonna be the one to take the title from Roman because Big E's on a roll right now. He's separated from the New Day. By the way, I thought they actually were gonna just break them up, break them up, but apparently it's like, no, they're still together. They're just on different brands. So I guess that's fine. But uh, yeah, Big E might end up winning the Royal Rumble and he might be the one to dethrone Roman at WrestleMania. That seems to be where this is going and I'm all for it if that's the case. And if he beats them before then, I'm okay with that too. That works too. Um, but yeah, I think the best match is probably going to be... I think Bailey and Sasha is probably going to have the best match. Because number one, we don't really... I think this is probably the, the main match that's like, you know, has the highest unpredictability. Because Sasha could just go into this match with Bailey and get destroyed. Uh, or towards the end, it's like, oh, you thought she was going to beat me, but I'm not going to lose yet. And then it's like, oh, come on, someone beat Bailey, somebody, please beat Bailey, someone. And then Sasha comes back and beats her at WrestleMania. But I, I don't think they're going to do that. I think Sasha has to win here because Bailey's beating everybody. And even though they had this draft and all that and they got new people on Raw and whatever, nah. Sasha, I think it's just better for Sasha to now be the new champion along with the new roster. And she's beating everybody who's new on the roster, right? I think that just makes more sense. And then I guess if Jeff beats Elias, he can just go face Drew is my best bet, which could be cool, but what kind of story are they gonna do there? Is Jeff gonna turn heel? Is Drew gonna turn heel? Is it gonna just be, um, you know, philosophy battle where like they're both, they're both um, faces, but they just disagree with each other, which could be cool too if they decide to do that. But then again, Survivor Series is coming up, so there might not be a championship defense. There might just be a champion versus champion match and Drew versus Roman would be crazy, which also is something I should have added in. That could be a really good fight or a good match. And then like the tag team titles, I feel like they should have done a uh, a title unification match on at Hell in a Cell. I think they should have done that where they have, so now they have one pair of tag team belts for the men and one pair of tag team belts for the women. They should have had a tag team match between the woman and the Raw Women's Champion, Asuka, because Asuka's not on the card, what? They might fit her in there though, but I feel like Asuka could team with uh, Lana and then it's for the tag titles, but also the Raw Women's Championship and then Asuka could lose the championship without even being pinned or submitted uh, and Lana's the one who costs the belt, right? Apparently Lana's supposed to be a baby face now. Excuse me. I don't know how you're gonna do that. So I guess it's just gonna be like, she can't, you know, we all know she can't really win, so when she does beat someone, it can be like a Eureka, like, oh, she beat someone, it's a miracle. But if she beats anybody, who is she beating? She better not be Asuka. I'd be so salty about that. I'd be pretty salty about it. But um, I guess aside from all that, I don't really have much else to say. I, I don't know. It's only five matches. Like, I'm just kind of surprised by that. But then again, I think Money in the Bank was only two matches, which was sick. So they could just, they could have just done three Hell in the Cell matches. I would have been fine with that, but they're doing five. All right, five matches. It's weird. It's just, it's just weird, man. Like Seth and uh, Buddy Murphy on the pay-per-view would have made more sense to have. Um, they could have done, um, what, what other matches could they have done besides the ones that are doing now that I can think of? Uh, maybe they could have done uh, Daniel Bryan versus freaking Sami Zayn. I don't know. He comes back and then now he wants to face Sami Zayn as a, as a WrestleMania rematch or, or whatever. And like it just writes itself because they already kind of have a story there. They just haven't seen Daniel Bryan in a minute. So it just kind of works. I don't know. Like, I, I don't know, man. It just, maybe they could have done something with the tag belts for yeah, 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 that's what I was saying. The unification match with the tag belts, my bad. And um, the, I already forgot. Yeah, Seth and Buddy, I had to go back and listen to my own audio to figure it out. Seth and Buddy and then the title, tag team title unification match would have been cool here. But I don't know. Also, speaking of the tag titles, the women's tag team championships need to be defended on NXT at some point. I'd appreciate that. Cause there are some teams on NXT and they haven't even had a shot at the belt yet, but I guess they're gonna save that for Survivor Series, maybe? 
which is fine too, but uh, that'll be it for the video. So Otis, Jeff Hardy, Drew McIntyre, uh, Sasha Banks, and Roman are winning their matches. That's my predictions. Let me know what your predictions are in the comments below. And I'll see y'all for some more UFC and some more FWF and an Naruto video in the future as well. Thanks for watching.